My name is Albert Kim, and my Korean name is Kim Song Jun. I'm 26 years old, and I'm from Anaheim Hills, California. I grew up with a lot of Korean influences, going to church, uh, you know, going to the Korean supermarkets. And then when I was 12, um, I moved to Northern Virginia in a small city called Vienna, where there weren't as many Koreans, but there were a few. Uh, and I grew up there basically until the age of 18, when I went to college out west for a year at Arizona State. And when I was 19, I packed up my things and I came to South Korea and I stayed for a long time and I'm still here living here. So my father was a radio producer at KBS and his main kind of specialty, I think, was to work uh, in both news and entertainment. So he worked with quite a few singers and actors back in the day, uh, had some connections. I think in the uh, early to late 90s is when he was there. I think the fact that he worked at a place like that in media kind of influenced me and made me want to work in a similar industry because I was exposed to so many films, TVs, and songs. What led my parents to move to the States was interesting because they actually had pretty decent jobs over here in Korea, but my mother also possessed a U.S. green card because her parents had immigrated to California in the 80s to run a business. For her, I think she felt really crowded, um, a little claustrophobic in Seoul, and she wanted to raise me specifically in a place where it was a little more open and diverse. And I think she wanted a change of pace, but also expose me to a new world and also maybe introduce me to the English language because she thought that was really important for my education. So the first school in America I went to was um, called St. John's. It's a private Lutheran school located in Orange, California. And over the years, Orange has become a lot more diverse. But back then in the early 2000s, especially in the private schools, it was mostly rich, upper middle class white kids. So. I actually didn't have a lot of Korean friends when I first moved to the States. I remember distinctly one friend who made me feel really welcome. His name was Daniel Kaplan. He made it a point to kind of introduce me to the culture, uh, show me around, invite me to his house. So that was kind of my first real American friend who made me feel welcome. And I was really lucky because I remember some of the other kids would always make fun of me for not being able to speak the language as well or not understanding some cultural nuances that they already had already picked up living there. And I think one of the most stark memories I have actually of going to school um, for the first time in America is actually at our Lutheran school, we had a traditional Korean klugak performance for some cultural appropriation day or whatever it was. And we had a team of people fly from Korea and perform a bunch of Korean traditional dances wearing, you know, traditional dresses. And I remember distinctly in the auditorium, one of the members um, took his microphone and asked and asked the students at the school, is anyone here Korean? And uh, I remember one of my classmates sitting next to me grabbed my hand and tried to make me raise it. But I immediately kind of shot her away and put my own hand down because I was so scared and kind of embarrassed to admit that I was different. And I didn't want people to kind of know me as that one Asian or Korean kid. And that's a moment that'll always stay with me. And that's almost a moment where I realized kind of that, um, you know, this is something I'm gonna have to deal with for the rest of my life. I think a big part of the shame that I felt for being Korean was the fact that you would have kids tease you at school, microaggressions like, do you eat dog? Are you from North or South Korea? Um, does your family, you know, house smell like kimchi? Those were kind of the beginning points. And then also what I experienced was in the media. I would watch a lot of TV and I never saw a kid who looked like me play any desirable role in a TV or a movie. You know, I grew up thinking that, okay, white people are the protagonists of the story in America. And here I'm just a supporting character or at worst, I'm a villain. So I think the combination of what I saw in the media and what I experienced at school in the form of microaggressions really contributed to that shame I felt, which is something that I dealt with for a long time, even as an adult. I went to school at Arizona State. Um, it's located in Tempe, Arizona, close to Phoenix. My time at university was interesting in the fact that it gave me the impetus to want to leave America even more. Uh, I had a great time there. I made a lot of good friends. I partied, I studied, uh, but the fact that I kind of heard the same microaggressive racist expressions I heard back in high school really disillusioned me and made me realize that, okay, I don't think I want to spend my early 20s in a place where, again, I'm not able to write my own story or I'm still viewed as a supporting character or as a villain. And I think, you know, going to a party and hearing a casual phrase like, oh, which Korea are you from? Or are you related to Kim Jong-un? Was really kind of the breaking point where I said, okay, I'm 19, 20-ish now, and I want to leave this place and find a place maybe where I'm a bit more accepted. It was tiring. So 
I, I had a great time, but at that point, I also realized that, okay, this isn't what I want to be doing with my early 20s, so I left. So when I first decided to study abroad in Korea, and I also told my parents about wanting to study, and at first they were pretty happy with the idea that I was going to study, but they were happy because they thought I was only going to be there for one semester and that I would come back after my exchange ended. When they figured out that I wanted to stay there long term, they weren't so happy because I think for a lot of Korean immigrant parents, their whole mindset is, why are you going back to a country that we tried so hard to leave and why are you leaving a country in the USA where we've created a life for ourselves? Isn't that kind of throwing away the work we put in? But for me, and I think other Korean Americans, we have a sense, there's a, you know, the diaspora that we experience where we don't feel truly at home in the States. So before we drop dead, I think we all want to go back to our home and experience a piece of a culture where we feel more at home and uh, more accepted. So that was the mindset that I had. And when I talk to a lot of Korean Americans who move abroad, a lot of them feel the same way, that they didn't feel truly satisfied or at home in the States, and that they wanted to find kind of a place where they could make their own identity and make their own story. And what I found in Seoul was truly, truly amazing, and I'm so grateful for that. When I came back to Korea, I was 19. Honestly, for the first time in my life, uh, I felt truly at peace. I felt like I could walk into a restaurant or a bar and not worry about eyes darting towards the door and looking at me and making a judgment based on my appearance. For the first time in my life, I could go on a date and not worry about whether I looked a certain way, whether I looked too Asian. It was truly a liberating feeling and one that, it was almost like a drug where I just couldn't get enough of it. And it got to a point where I just didn't want to leave and I wanted to stay here. And it made me wonder why my parents had left this country and taking me to a place where I had experienced so much discrimination and hardship. And it almost actually made me a little angry in a sense too, because I felt like maybe I could have had somewhat of a better life here because people weren't as judgmental towards me. I always talk with my parents about why they moved to the States. It's been a sensitive topic in our house. For my parents, they didn't think of my perspective when they moved to the States, they always told me that, okay, we, we didn't know. We grew up in Korea. We just thought America was a land of opportunity. We didn't take into account the fact that maybe you would be one of two Asian kids in a class. Maybe that you wouldn't fit in all the time at social gatherings. I think for the older generation especially, they only look at things in terms of maybe economic standards and how much more money they can maybe provide for their kids whereas they don't factor in the social cost of also moving. I think that's what my parents were thinking, and that's what they've told me now as I've become an adult. And now as an adult, I totally understand what, where they're coming from. But for sure, as a kid, it was hard. And yeah, there was a lot of anger there too. So during my time here, I was able to connect with a really great Korean-American therapist who spoke both languages perfectly. And she had also spent time going back and forth between both countries like I did as a kid. And what I was able to gain out of these sessions is the fact that I realized that my parents were trying the best they could to make it in a new country. And I was trying the best I could to survive in a new social setting where I wasn't you know, considered a person almost. And that really helped me um, unpack kind of the anger I felt at my parents because I realized that they just didn't know. They didn't know what I was going through at school. They were busy trying to pay the bills in a new country. And once I accepted that and I realized that now I'm an adult who has the freedom to make his own decisions, it really gave me a feeling of peace where I look back on that period of my life as more of a learning lesson than as a piece of pain or trauma. I've definitely come to peace with the fact that, you know, I grew up the way I did. And I'm actually so grateful now as an adult looking back because I was able to really grow up in two different cultures. At school, I was able to speak English and grow up as an American. And at home, I was able to speak Korean and grow up as a Korean. And I think it's made me a more well-rounded person who tries to be more empathetic, especially to other people and maybe to other minorities across the world who may face some sort of similar discrimination. And I, I think it's something that now, looking back, I'm really grateful to my parents for allowing me to also live in the States and experience situations that made me grow as a person. My name is Albert Kim, and this is my Korean-American story. Mm -hmm.